What's going on guys? In this video I'm going to talk about one of my favorite common questions from people and that is do I need a college education to become a system administrator, DevOps engineer, infrastructure engineer, automation engineer, platform engineer, operations engineer? Whatever all the sysadmin roles uh, have been split out into um, all these different job titles, I'm really just talking about, I'm going to call them sysadmin, system administration. You're on the ops side of some infrastructure that delivers some value to the business. So this is specifically f with sort of the Linux side of the house in mind, although I have been a Windows sysadmin. I want to speak to this fear of all the job ads when you're reading them say requires a bachelor's degree and sometimes they say or equivalent experience. And that can be really demotivating when you're just getting started. The first thing you have to remember is that all of these job ads are either totally written with very little input uh, from a technical team, totally written by an HR person, sometimes not even a very senior HR person, although that doesn't really make much of a difference. When a technical team passes off these job requirements, they are often edited by the HR person to include sort of HR boilerplate, like, well, this is a smart role that pays a lot, so definitely want to have a college degree there. You know, it's just this like traditionalist thinking that that must get me a better crop of candidates, right, if we set some higher bar. So that can make getting the first job hard. It's not a problem you'll ever run into again once you have that first job, provided you're skilled and, you know, socially adept and meet a bunch of people and kind of work your way up. So while getting that first job can be hard, once you have a little bit of experience, that's no longer an issue really. Like I don't have a college degree. I've learned a lot of the stuff that I would have there, but I'll talk a little bit about that later. But I now regularly get recruiting emails from LinkedIn, Facebook, Apple, um, you know, a huge crop of like companies that I could have never gotten a first job at. Um, so I want you to understand that it's really just about getting in and at the beginning about kind of ignoring that bachelor's uh, or equivalent experience needed. I'll talk a little bit about what you can do to make yourself a more attractive candidate at that early stage in your career, um, but it just revolves around basically having practical projects, preferably something that people can actually look at and use, you know, something that you can kind of swing into talking about as if it it is experience. It's totally legitimate experience. I mean, whether someone pays you or not has very little to do with whether the product is actually good, you know, the product of your work, uh, provided that you treat it professionally and you kind of think about all the different aspects and use that as an opportunity to learn the practical sort of on the job realities of this. Like, you can't really make infrastructure without monitoring it and you probably want some alerting too. So that's stuff you should think about in your private projects if you want to use them as resume pieces. Okay, so I'd like to treat two aspects of this. First, the education itself, and second, the experience that is implied by that education, even though those things aren't actually related. And then third, some practical tips to actually break into this and uh, the kind of learning path I recommend. So we've already talked about the requirement for the education which is really more of a job filter. It's designed to get people to not apply to a certain job. You can still apply and you can still very frequently hear back. I'm not saying you don't need the education at all. You just need to get it yourself, which can be a little bit more difficult than doing it with your parents or the state or somebody else paying for it uh, when you're a kid. You need to be a little bit more self-motivated if you're doing this as something that you're learning outside of actually doing it in a practical way during your day-to-day -day job. So the education itself, we're talking about fundamental operating system concepts, things like networking, which you should learn in a fair amount of detail, computer science concepts, maybe more important for uh, writing software professionally, but sysadmin and software development kind of go hand in hand, or they should, and not only for working together and understanding each other and kind of using the same terms the same way, uh, but also for you're going to be developing software. As a, If you're a competent sysadmin, you're going to be developing software to remove huge chunks of manual stuff that you do during your job. So learning how that works, learning best practices, um, and learning like systems and methodology for doing good software development 
is really important. So computer science concepts also help, although they're not explicitly required for system administration. Those things also happen to be fascinating to learn. So if you're already doing this as a hobby, you're going to get a huge kick when you like buy Andrew Tannenbaum's um, Modern Operating Systems. It's an amazing book. It's fun to read, and it's like it shows you concepts in an easy to learn way, and then like actual code that implements some of that stuff. And you can just see it right there. Like it removes some of the magic from this hobby or passion that you have. You know, Linux and Linux-like operating systems, um, or just operating systems in general. It just shows you that it's actually it's something that can be understood. You can understand how this stuff works underneath. Pursuing that on your own time makes you better, and I would argue that it makes you better than if you'd done that when you were 18, um, because you know you're doing so much other stuff. Most of it's social at that age that it's a huge distraction from actually caring about and learning about these concepts on a deep level. Which brings me to experience. Experience is king in this industry, in this job market. Knowing the theory is simply not enough. Uh, practical experience beats someone with a degree or with knowledge of the theory every single time. Most of the interview process in system administration jobs, certainly the ones that I've seen in like the major cities in the US and the major tech cities in the US and even in Europe, is there's like the theoretical stuff is great if you know it, but you are done with the interview if you don't have some of the practical, some of the basic practical skills that every sysadmin needs to have. So if you walk into a place and you can like demonstrate and talk about, I know how to set up highly available, you know, properly monitored, self-healing to some extent infrastructure, that's a huge selling point. That's more than like, I completed, you know, OS 301 in college. And I think I remember some of how like a scheduler works. If you can say, I can come in and restructure or rewrite monitoring and alerting to ensure that we can get rid of this alerting fatigue that's taken hold in the team. Uh, that has a much higher chance of getting you hired than you know understanding some other conceptual detail of how file systems work or how physical memory is abstracted uh, in an operating system. It's not that those things aren't important, it's just that you're going to go do this for money to help a business presumably survive, make more money, support a product. And those practical things are simply more important. They're not the only thing that's important. We'll get to that in a minute. But they will win in a job interview. So here's what I actually recommend. As you're learning this stuff, regardless of whether or not you're getting the degree on the side or have a comp sci degree, what I recommend is starting with the practical. This is why my entire YouTube channel leans so heavily towards the practical and towards learning new theoretical things in a practical context. It's because we've all had the experience of like buying a technical book and being like, I'm going to learn how this works. And even reading through it, I mean, I've made myself read through many uh, like programming books or I'm notorious for this, right? I get excited about a new language, buy a book on it, read the book. And then I'm like, what can I actually do now? Shit. Like, I remember the concepts, I sort of remember how it works a little bit, but what's actually useful to me is doing a three-minute tutorial or a half-hour tutorial on that language, building something that I build in every single language, like a little command line game or uh, a tiny web app or something like that, and then using that to drive learning the theory underneath. So start with starting with the practical gives you a conceptual framework or like a context to hang a lot of that theory on. And that makes it accessible. You know, when you're just trying to start with the theory, it makes it incredibly dry, hard to learn. You probably won't remember much. It's kind of a waste of time. But when you start with the practical, and then you use that as sort of a way to make the theory relevant because you need it to solve the next level of your problem, that's the way to go. Which kind of brings me back full circle to, is this education important? No and yes. The degree, this like requirement that you see on job ads, must have bachelor's degree, is something that you can safely ignore. But what that's pointing at is the education underneath, the actual theoretical knowledge and understanding of the systems that you're working with is not optional and it's tremendously important. You need both the practical and the theoretical side. 
with pretty much anything that you're pursuing seriously. Having some practical skills is a great start to start hanging the theory that all this base is on onto. It's going to save you a lot of time and energy. That theory, in turn, will make you much better at the practical side of your job, the actual troubleshooting. Like, theory will inform your decisions about where you look next on a problem because you understand how the system works underneath, so you know, well, I've eliminated that the problem is in this layer, so I know that it's got to be over here, or this behavior kind of implies something that I would imagine happening if there was a network issue in this part of the network or in this network service. So they both kind of inform and strengthen each other, sort of like a yin-yang kind of thing. You need both, but don't be discouraged, especially early on in your career, when you're just like Googling around for job ads or whatever open positions and you see this like, don't apply if you don't have a bachelor's. Because most technical teams that I've worked in will be fine with starting a junior that has practical skills and a desire to learn uh, and clearly an interest in the theory and sort of underpinnings of the field, even if that person doesn't like didn't get their knowledge through a degree. You know, our industry is still great in the sense that it's a little bit of the Wild West and it's a little bit of like, if you can get shit done, we need you. So like, come on in and let's get started. Like that attitude pervades a lot of places. There's a lot of really, really great jobs out there. Um, and you can probably get a better one than you're thinking of right now, um, even with not that much experience. I hope that's been helpful and I hope that helps to answer a kind of a question that has a, a few different answers. Go out there, get your first job as soon as you can, and uh, then the learning can really begin. Remember to like and subscribe if this has been helpful. Uh, I'm planning on doing a few more of these looking into the camera uh, videos because I'm getting more and more questions about topics that aren't that don't kind of lend themselves to a screencast as the answer to a question. So yeah, look for more of these. Thanks again, guys. See you in the next one.